Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. The very idea of a controlled substance act pretty much goes against what our Constitution and Founding Fathers were all about when they founded this country. They, that was what they wanted you to do. They wanted you to have the right to choose for yourself and freedom of choice, particularly in matters of things that belong to you as a person or things that you did as a person or stuff that you wanted to take in as, your, as a person. Food, herbs, cannabis, you name it. And the, you know, when Nixon, the crony Nixon, came up with the Controlled Substance Act and the formation of the Drug Enforcement Agency, this was so anti-constitutional, it's not even funny. And the very idea that they got away with it is even unbelievable. But, you know, we, we've spent about uh, <clears throat> in excess of four or five trillion dollars since this stupid act was formed in the 1970s. Countless people have died. We've sent millions and millions and millions of people to jail. Uh, was it all worth that? I mean, the Controlled Substance Act itself, they have strict criterion when they take a substance and put it on there. For one thing, it has to be something that causes a, uh, you know, a, a problem in the community. I mean, this has to be something that, you know, when people are using it, it causes widespread pain and suffering for others around. And uh, usually most of the things that are placed on controlled substance too are addictive substances. It's, uh, it was quite shocking that they would uh, even outlaw a plant, let alone an herb, and a medicinal and uh, socialist, socialist herb that this is. It's amazing that they would even outlaw something like that. But when you break the constitutional foundation of this country, and that's what they did basically when they formed the Controlled Substance Act and the Drug Enforcement Agency, I mean, you, you pretty much were telling individuals that they did not have the right to choose for themselves, that they, the government, knew better for them than they themselves knew, for, knew what, they, what they should do. And this is just, it's just unbelievable. I mean, what are they going to do next? Are they going to hand us out a diet list and tell us these are the foods that we need to eat and, you know, at what times we have to eat them? And then, oh, while you're at it, here's your bathroom schedule? It, it's that ridiculous. When things come down to personal choice, and what you yourself want to ingest or put in your own body. Nobody has a domain over that. That is the one thing that is yours. It's nobody else's business. It doesn't matter what they think about it, how they feel about it, whether they're for you or against you, or, or their life is completely opposite and they want you to follow that. It is none of their business. And th it was none of the government's business to ever form this law in the first place, let alone form a police force like the Drug Enforcement Agency to throw away millions of people's lives over the last four or five decades just because they chose to use an herb, basically an herb, that has never killed a soul since the dawn of time. Now come on, four trillion dollars, thousands and thousands upon tens of thousands of deaths south of the border because we allow this cartel to run just to muck and rule with the iron fist of violence. Trillions of dollars that this country could have used to rebuild our own economy. We killed the hemp industry in this country, which right now, if we had it going, would certainly be knocking those 9% unemployment numbers back. And here we have a stupid Congress that has to sit up there and argue back and forth because they have to raise a debt ceiling because they're so irresponsible with the tax dollars that are sent them that they have to spend more. And all they're going to do is just keep spending more. And they're going to spend it on things like the Drug Enforcement Agency, the Justice Department. If we took out that faction of the of the scheme there, the, the, the amount of money that's wasted, not only in drug enforcement, but Homeland Security, these border patrols, the uh, Justice Department, the prison <coughs> industrial complex. If you take all of that out, that just has to do with cannabis alone. If you include the war on drugs, I mean, it's up around $200 billion a year that we spend. But, you know, just, just for cannabis alone, it's around $125 billion that we spend chasing after people who chose to use a safe herb, who made their freedom of choice being an American citizen. This was their freedom of choice, what they decided to do. And then we have these commercials on television that slam the bottle of Jack Daniels down on the table. And what are the words coming out of their mouth as they do it? An American tradition. An American tradition. Well, all you people that drink Jack Daniels like that, and I really don't care if you do or not, that's your business. How would you like it though if the government said, hey, you people drinking Jack Daniels, you can't do it no more. 
and we're going to form a Jack Daniels agency that'll come and arrest you and throw you in prison if we so much as catch you possessing it. Now, would that open your eyes a little bit as to what the pot smokers have been going through? Your Jack Daniels kills about 150,000 people a year. Our cannabis kills no one and has never killed anybody. Why aren't the cops locking you guys up if they want to chase after the potheads? Does anybody out there in America have a brain cell left functioning? Doesn't this mean anything to anybody? All the violence, all the deaths that are going on, the trillions of dollars we spent, for what? Why? Because people want to use something safer than hardcore whiskey or alcohol or prescription drugs or cigarettes? It seems like the right choice. Why would we ever go after people that were thinking like that? They're using a substance that's the safest one. Since the dawn of time, you can't even tally up one, one death from an overdose from it. You can't even in this country tally up an overdose that visited any hospital emergency room. Not one. How do you get to stand there and continue this Controlled Substance Act and this drug policy when it really it comes down to a person's individual right, their freedom of choice? It's their right. If they want to smoke pot, that's their right. Most of them do it in the privacy of their own home. Why does that bother you people out there that are so against it? Every time you try to talk to people about legalizing marijuana or, or pot, smoking pot and all that, they just, <clears throat> they just drop their shoulders in the head and they get this real down look on their face like, like it's some scourge or something. And yet their friends are laughing it up and boozing it up and getting in fights and, and it, it's, it's just so hypocritical. Is it only the pot smokers? Are they the only ones that can see this? I mean, it's just, it's so insane. Freedom of choice, America. That's what it's all about. It's what our founding fathers set up the Constitution. It's what they based this country on, freedom of choice. And your right to use, grow, smoke, bathe in cannabis if you want to is your individual personal right. And there's no law in this country, none, no police force, none, that have a right to infringe upon that. Thank you for joining the Cannabis Corner.